Is there a difference between soil and dirt? Let's find out. My name is Betsy, welcome to my channel, we gon' be friends. I made a dire mistake in one of my previous videos when I was repotting some plants, and instead of using the word potting mix, I said dirt. Big mistake! Now you wouldn't think that that's a very big deal, but it kind of is! So I was having a nice evening, it was after work hours, I was having a little glass of vino on my couch, on my computer, having no life, get a little email from somebody named Patty who tells me, girl you gotta stop using the word dirt. And at first I was all like, what? Excuse me, Patty. It's a matter of semantics, okay? I got a little curious. I started Googling around. I'm trying to figure out, is it a matter of semantics? Is there really a difference between dirt and soil? And does it matter? Does it have any relation at all to houseplant care? Turns out Patty is right. Patty's right. I'm wrong. I should not use the word dirt when I'm talking about potting mix. And here's why. Soil has structure. It has not been disturbed. Soil is alive. Soil has microbial activity within it. It has living organisms within it. And it has not been disturbed in any way. So you go outside and you put a shovel in the ground and you take it out and then you look at the hole that you've created and you can see, you know, the walls inside that hole of the soil. It's layers and inside of that soil there's a bunch of stuff. There's a whole ecosystem in there, and it hasn't been disturbed. But dirt, on the other hand, is displaced soil. It is what you have under your fingernails after you've been digging in the dirt. It's what you track into the house on the bottom of your shoes. It's what is kind of like dusty and in the air or on the sides of the road, etc. That is dirt. That is not soil. It has, it has no structure. It's just blown around and getting all over the place and it's making you vacuum all the time when your cats go in and out and in and out. So basically you could say soil is alive. It has organic matter in it. It has living organisms and microbial activity within it and it hasn't been disturbed whereas dirt is just blown all over the place. Nothing can live in that. It's just, you know, dusty dirt stuff that's all. It's, Kind of a vague explanation, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought too. If you just take a bunch of dirt that you found, you know, you sweep up your house, you get some dirt from the road, you just put it in a pot, your plant's not gonna be able to live in that. It's not alive. It is not, it might have some stuff in it that you don't want actually. The thing is, the difference between soil and dirt is really only something that matters when it comes to outdoor gardening, which is not really my area of expertise. I do have some plants on my terrace, but I assure you that they are just withering away because I was not prepared to take care of six outdoor plants that came with my apartment. I could take care of 115 indoor plants, but when it comes to a rhododendron outside, I'm screwed. But when it comes to indoor plants, we use potting mixtures that we get at the garden store. Things that are specifically made to be used in potted plants. That's not soil and that's not dirt. That's something completely different. Those are special mixtures created just for indoor use. Many people have asked me, can't I just go outside into the yard, into the garden, into the woods, dig up some dirt? some soil and bring it into my house, put it in a pot and plant my calathea in it. Can't I do that? Is, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with doing that? I don't understand. Like soil is soil, right? You saw if plants can grow out there then plants can grow in it in my house too. I don't understand the difference. No, you can't do that. Stop it. Don't. Quit it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be so aggressive. There are a couple of reasons for that, right? Outside, with the soil that is existing on the earth, there's an entire ecosystem there. It has living organisms in it. It has microbes, good and bad, living within it. And if you just take a chunk of it, bring it into your home, put it in a pot, you're throwing off the entire ecosystem and you are giving the opportunity for bad microbes and bad organisms to take over, which could eventually harm your plant. You're also risking the, the chances of bringing in you know, unwanted pests into your home uh, that could infect all of your other plants. And I know some of you are like, Microbes? <laughs> sure! Microbes are basically just single cell organisms like bacteria or fungi. They can be good or they can be bad. Uh, like when you get sick, it might be because some microbes went up your nose and they weren't good for you. They gave you, they gave you a little bacterial infection, then you get a sinus infection, then you gotta go to the doctor, etc. Or they could be good like uh, the microbes that you find in yogurt. You know, that stuff's good for you. It's good for your gut flora. Did I say floral? I meant flora. 
The second reason is that when you take soil from outside and put it in a pot, as time goes on and you water it and water it, it will eventually turn into like a compact pot of clay. Basically, it will settle and settle and settle until you water it and you just notice water sits on top. It's not even seeping into the soil anymore because it's in a pot and it's not outside. There's a difference and <laughs> there's a way that soil works outside and it doesn't work inside in a pot. It turns into a total muddy mess. So instead, we use potting mixtures inside our homes. You can make them yourself or you can buy them at the garden center like I do because that's the easiest and quickest way to do it. I usually buy potting mixtures and then kind of you know mix them up depending on the plant that I'm taking care of. What is in basic potting mixtures? You'll go and you'll see a bag that just says like indoor potting mix or indoor plant potting mixture or whatever. Usually it contains peat. Peat is partially decayed vegetation and it is included in potting mixtures because it's very sponge-like. It retains water and nutrients. Retains water and nutrients. Then you'll often find perlite or sand in mixtures. And that is really just to add aeration to prevent the potting mix from turning into a cement block. Like I said, soil would if you just brought it inside, put it in a pot and let it go. Sometimes it will have vermiculite. Vermiculite is basically a mineral and it's used again to retain water and nutrients. It can, it sort of adds some aeration to the soil, but not in the same way that perlite does because perlite doesn't retain any water at all. It's just like creates little bubbles within the soil that pre prevents it from being compact. But vermiculite can absorb water and it does absorb nutrients. So it can't be used the same way as perlite. Then you might find wood chips or bark in a mixture, or you might just find it all by itself. Like with orchid potting mix, it's usually just tree bark, chunks and chunks of tree bark. Chunks and chunks, just chunks and chunks of tree bark. I don't know why. <laughs> You might find tree bark, like chunks of tree bark in a potting mix, or you might find it all by itself as its own potting mix made for epiphytes like orchids. You know, it's just giant organic matter that decays over time, creating macronutrients for the plant to absorb. And also it provides excellent drainage. So it's also used for aeration and quick draining purposes. Then you might find compost, Com <laughs> compost. British people say compost. I always say compost because I'm from Ohio. Compost is decayed organic matter that is very nutrient and microbe rich and it's often added to potting mixtures to fertilize it. It's like a soil conditioner of sorts. And I know your next question, the next question is, okay, then what potting mix is good for what plant? What do I do? How do I know? I go to the garden center, there's 18 different kinds. What kind do I buy? Do I have to mix it with another kind? What do I do? I see there's just bags of perlite all by themselves. Do I need to add the perlite to the potting mix? What if the potting mix already has perlite in it? Or if it doesn't, do I, do I need to create my own mixture of just like peat and compost and perlite and orchid bark? Like, what do I do? Well, that depends on on the plant. So cacti and succulents, for example, come from regions that are really dry and arid. They don't get a lot of rain. So they have evolved over time to retain a lot of moisture in their leaves and in the stem and in, you know, like in the body of the cactus because they have to hold on to that water for a really long time since they see so little rain. So when they bring, when we, when they, when they come into our homes, when we bring them into our homes, we have a tendency to overwater them because we treat them like other types of plants that come from the rainforest or tropical areas. Uh, that's not how cacti and succulents work. So when you go to the garden store and you see a potting mix made specifically for cacti and succulents, it's usually going to contain a lot of perlite or a lot of sand because that's very quick draining and it doesn't retain moisture like a sponge. I mean, you should never use a cacti or a succulent mix that contains like a lot of peat or something because that's really like a sponge that holds onto water forever. But when it comes to ferns or terrarium plants, they generally grow on the rainforest floor. So they're accustomed to living in kind of a moist soil and they feed very heavily on decaying organic matter in their natural environment. So ferns, for example, would do much better in a mixture that contains compost and peat. Of course, because it's an indoor plant and it has, you know, it's in a pot, it's in a container, it's not growing like it naturally would in its outdoor environment, you should add some aeration to the soil. So you should, like a, a typical houseplant potting mix is probably going to be good for a fern because it contains a little bit of perlite, it contains a little bit of peat, etc. Epiphytes like staghorn ferns or orchids or hoya are always going to prefer something that allows a lot of aeration around their roots because they naturally grow on trees. So the best mixtures for them are going to contain 
chunks of tree bark. Orchids, for example, mine are grown in a complete mix of just chunks of tree bark. And you can find orchid potting mix at the garden center. With my terrestrial Hoyas, like Hoya lobii, which does not grow in the tree, but grows on the ground like a little bush, I put a little bit of peat moss and then like a, well, I mean, I use like a houseplant potting mix that contains peat as its main ingredient, then a ton of perlite and chunks of tree bark in it. And uh, that's great for this one because I do like a soil that retains just a little bit more moisture than my other Hoyas that naturally grow on trees. Which for example would be Hoyabella. Here's the little Hoyabella plant that I have. It's practically just growing in chunks of tree bark like an orchid would. There's a really minuscule amount of peat moss in here and some perlite as well. That does mean that I have to water this plant more frequently. I will notice when the leaves become a bit dimpled that it needs watered but that's how they grow in their natural environment. And if you keep a plant like this in a really peat or compost heavy mixture, the roots will doubtlessly rot away. Don't do that. Thank you so much for watching and thank you Patty for sending me that email because it allowed me to educate myself and to create a video that people might be interested in. I hope you were, I hope you learned something with me today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon.